Well, hello everyone and welcome in to another rockin' awesome night here at the Six Screens up here in Boston. Well, my name's Rick Farron. I'm coming to you from the apostate capital of the world. And boy, I have to say that we have a lot of apostates up here. Lots of people are leaving the watchtower and they're going to be leaving in your area too if they haven't already left. More and more people are joining the ranks of the apostates. Well, we are so happy tonight. That we have so many people wanting to come into the program. It's just amazing to me. And a few folks out there listening in later on when we open up the phone lines, why don't you call in? Call in and let us know who you are and why you're calling in. We'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and do that. We'll put the phone number up here in a while. Call in. Don't be afraid to do that. Well, friends, things are happening. Things are happening. We'll get into everything here in just a while. We'll talk about the Memorial Night protest that we had. We'll talk to some people who went to the memorial. Uh, we're going to find out what the witnesses were wearing. But before we get into all of that, I just want to mention a couple of things. Well, you see the duck. We got this duck. He's uh, he's right up here. I'll kind of show you to him. That, that's him right there. That, that's a duck. Now you say, what's that duck all about? Well, we have a sealed envelope here. There's some secret words. There's two secret words in this envelope. If anyone can, in the conversation when they're calling in, if they mention one of the words that is in this secret envelope, so to speak, then you win. Well, tonight I'm going to give you a couple of books. I'm going to give you a couple of books. I got some beautiful books here that I want to show you. Look at these old Watchtower publications reprinted. I've got some beautiful books. I'll send them to you. Uh, whoever calls in tonight gets two of them. If you win the prize tonight, you get two of these books. Oh, yeah, this is a, this is wonderful. Let me see if I can't get them closer here. There you go. Uh, one is called His People for His Name, and it's all about the history of Jehovah's Witnesses. And then the other book I have here, The Way to Paradise. Wow, that was a crazy book written by the Watchtower. But uh, they've been reproduced, and I'll send you, if you can guess what the secret words are in this envelope. All you have to do is guess one. Guess one. If you guess two, you not only get the books, but you get 20 bucks on top of it. So they're in here. Where we'll reveal them at the end of the program tonight. So at the end of the program, we'll have like a lightning round. If no one got the, if no one got the secret words, I'll give you some clues so that you can get the prize. So anyways, let's see what's going on here. All right, still alive in 2025. I know we've been talking about this now. Still haven't got the date, but tentatively... But 2025, August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, that looks like it's going to be the first ex-Jehovah's Witness convention in history. So far, I have 167, 68 people that have written to me and want to come. We have room for 500 people. So if you plan on coming, write me a note, an uh, email, I should say, or write to jwworldnews at, at gmail.com. And I'll give you some number tickets. Now, nobody has tickets yet because I want to put dates on them. And the Hilton hasn't given me dates. They still can't because it's so far out. But it's it's going to be in August, tentatively speaking, August 1st, 2nd, 3rd of 2025. Not 2024 now, 2025. So we got a lot of people have written me. Uh, the, number, the tickets will be numbered. So become first come, first serve. Now, if we get over the 500, you might have to pick, uh, you might have to, you know, kind of uh, peek your nose through the door to hear or see what's going on. Uh, the same thing with uh, people, they can come, they can, you know, listen on this streaming because it will be live stream. So we want you to be with us, but we only have room for about 500. And it looks like we could hit that amount. But even if you don't get a seat, I mean, maybe when someone gets up and leaves, or leaves early, maybe you'll be able to grab their seat. So by all means, write me, jwworldnews at gmail.com. And we'll get you the tickets. Uh, but I know a lot of people have written, don't worry, I, I got you down. I've been getting you emails. And very shortly, I'll send you out a little announcement and let you know what's exactly happening with the date. So a lot of things are happening. Did you did you go to the memorial this week? My goodness gracious, I did. 
I did. I went with the Six Green protest team, and we had a great protest out in front of a convention center. It was the Hilton Doubletree Convention Center uh, right up here in Massachusetts in Andover, Mass. Uh, the thing was, now, we went to the Wilmington Kingdom Hall. That, that's the hall I used to go to in Wilmington, Massachusetts. But what happened is uh, they didn't, it, it, it didn't seem like they were going to have it there. Uh, I got there at 5 o'clock. It was all set to set the signs up. And, friends, there's a lot of work doing that, I have to tell you. You got to set the signs up. You got to set the desk up, the computer up, the webcams up, the sound equipment, everything. It takes it takes a like an hour, sometimes an hour and a half to get everything working. So I got there at five, thinking, okay, it's going to be at seven. But nobody was there at five. Normally, they someone would be there cleaning or whatever, but nobody came at quarter past five. Nobody was there at five thirty. So I begin to think, wow, maybe they're not even going to have a memorial here tonight. So we looked up online, and they were having a memorial the next town over at the Doubletree Hotel. <clears throat> and they said that there was going to be three or four congregations that would meet there. So I said, we better hustle over there. And I had a permit already from the Wilmington Police Department. So I figured, well, let's just kind of ride by the seat of our pants We'll drive over to the next town and try to catch that convention center. So we drove over there, but the convention center was deep into the woods and there was only one road in. And I didn't want to go on their property because they could kick you off. So we stayed about, I'd say, oh, maybe an eighth of a mile away from the hotel. But we set up our, our little protest headquarters right there. We had all the signs. And I'll show you, well, fact, fact, let me show you a couple of signs right now. Uh, just to give you an idea, so you'll have an idea what we did. To take take a look at some of these signs, I think you'll find them fascinating. So there is one right there. Now, we set that up. I found a good way to display those signs. I put a big 12-foot 12, uh, 12 ladder out there, and I put those signs on there. Now, you can see what it says, Norway gives Watchtower a new light. That, that's the sign we had on the top. And the witnesses were reading these signs, friends, I have to tell you. And it shows a man to the left there with a beard. Maybe you can't see it in the picture, but he has a beard on. And he's kind of thinking. Then on the other, on the right-hand side, it shows a bunch of women with slacks. So Norway is really the reason for the new light here on, uh, on having this dress code changed. And then we have the sign in the middle deals about Jehovah's Witnesses on how they uh, are covering up child molestation. Well, we all know that. And the witnesses were reading these signs. I have to tell you that honestly. The Watchtower, and then the last banner that you see there says, the Watchtower organization breaks up families. Well, we all know they do, right? Yes, the Watchtower does break up families. And then we had some other signs too. Now there's that sign there. You saw that at a bunch of protests. We bring that with us. Australia Royal Commission. And it says punch in, you can't see it there, but uh, punch in Jehovah's Witnesses in Australia. And you'll see exactly all about the Royal Commission on how they have covered up child molestation over there. Then we had some other signs we're displaying. And, uh, well, that's not the one. Let's see if we got this one. All right, there it is there. There, there you can see it. Uh, maybe you can't see it too well, but it says on the top, where's Tony? And that's, of course, Tony Morris. And it has a picture of Tony blowing a match out. So we had that up there. And uh, then we have another banner below that says FBI investigate Watchtower for child sex abuse. Yes, we're asking the government to check Watchtower out. In fact, we know the FBI and the CIA and other government agencies, they got a close eye on the Watchtower. And then look at that last sign on the bottom. Will your kingdom hall be sold off next? Well, these are questions that, you know, we have all the signs, but I am so glad. I am so glad that people were coming by and they were slowing down. One woman actually gave us the thumbs up as she was coming by. So, you know, that is, look, and I've been protesting for 17 years. Yes, I have. I'm, I'm sorry, 16 years. 16 years will be 17 years. And the, well, here's a, very, here's a picture of me. That's me, folks. Look at that. That is 16 years ago in front of the Kingdom Hall in Wilmington, Massachusetts. And that was me protesting. That was my first protest. 
uh, against the Watchtower organization, and we've done literally, you know, probably 30 since then. So, you know, protesting isn't for everyone, but I like it. You get that adrenaline rush. And as of late, there's way more people all around the world. Uh, many ex-Jehovah's Witnesses are now getting together and protesting. Isn't that amazing? So that's uh, something to think about. But back in 2007, when I first started, it, it wasn't a big thing. People didn't like me protesting. They thought I was feeding into the Watchtower persecution complex. Oh, Rick, don't do that. They just love it because you're persecuting them. Well, I think it can make a big, big difference. Well, let's take a look and see what else we get going on. So anyways, we got some video. We do have some video of the protest. I, I should show that right off the bat so you can get an idea. Uh, what, what I'm going to say, though, before I do the video, like I say, we went to a convention center. It was a Hilton Hotel and here in Andover, Massachusetts. It's, it's probably about five miles from where I live. And what they'd had is three or four, as I said earlier, congregations that were meeting at this conference center. And uh, we thought it was kind of unusual. Why would they do that? And we'll discuss that in a little bit. Now, I mean, it could be because of the dwindling numbers. I was thinking off the bat that, well, maybe the meeting, because, you know, if you just had a couple of congregations meeting in one hall, there wouldn't be enough people to fill all the seats. So maybe they have three or four congregations meet together. In this Hilton Hotel, they didn't have, they didn't, they only had about three or four hundred seats from what I understand. And, and they weren't filled. We, we sent, we're going to show some clips of it, but we sent a couple of inside reporters in there with a camera. We'll show you what went on inside there. But both of them said that, that the seats were not, uh, were not filled. And even the cars going by, I mean, for three or four congregations, you would expect a lot more cars going by, but but there really wasn't. So that that amazed me as well. Uh, yeah, I've seen many venues, as all of you have as well, throughout the country. It's not always at a Kingdom Hall. There have been very many venues. They use sporting arenas and even schools, high schools, sometimes they'll actually have a memorial event. Uh, and, and the reason, you know, first I thought it could be because of the dwindling numbers, and I'm sure that's part of it. But see, what's happening is uh, the Watchtower has sold off so many Kingdom Halls that uh, they've combined a lot of the halls together. So in many cases, you might have three or four congregations meeting. And even there are some, in fact, in the past, memorials where three congregations were together that the memorial didn't start till 9 p.m. So the Watchtower just is renting these facilities so that everybody can come at once. So. So that's one reason, but, but I'm sure also it's being done to not add attention to the, 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 the empty seats at the Kingdom Hall at the memorial. So just, uh, just thinking out loud more than anything, but it, it could be, we, who knows? The watch that doesn't share anything with us, right? We have to kind of guess what's going on behind the curtains. All right, let's take a look here. I'm going to play the video. Let, let's play the video of the, uh, let, me, let me bring it right up to speed. This is the convention. Uh, this is at the convention center. This is the memorial from last Sunday night. Let me get that up so that you guys can see it. Let me just put it right here. And I'm going to share the screen. And we'll play a little bit of it. And you can see what the, a, lot, a, lot of the, a lot of the people were writing to me and saying, Rick, what were the people wearing? Are the women wearing slacks? Do the men have beards? Are the men wearing ties? Well, we're going to take you inside. So let me see if we can't get this up right now. Uh, all right. All right. Let's see. Is that going to share that? Just give me one second to make sure we're going to get this shared. Okay. All right. Six screens at the memorial. Okay. All right. So we're going to have you see this. This is, uh, this is me and my good friend, Norman. And we had some photographers there from a couple other people working with us taking pictures. But let's share this right now. This is the memorial uh, last Sunday night. And I want you to see, I want you to see some of the clothing. This is what everyone was tuned in for. I mean, everyone was asking me, Rick, what are they wearing because of the new dress code? So let's get the video playing and see what you think. Let's start right here. 
Show them how to use it. And we're going to send Norman's going to get in his car. He's going to go to the convention center right now. We do have Julie down there as well. And hope to get some pictures of the witnesses leaving the convention center. Wow, that's going to be amazing. So we're looking forward to that. And, uh, well, we've got another couple hours. We'll still be here tonight. So uh, don't you guys go anywhere. Uh, we're gonna, you're going to find that uh, we've got a lot of things we still have to cover tonight. We're going to talk about the, the full. We have a full moon tonight. We're gonna, but the witnesses, many people are saying, you guys are celebrating it too early. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. So in just a, a few minutes here, we'll be getting, uh, we'll be getting uh, Norman to get in front of the convention convention center. Sorry, friends, a little nippy out here. My sometimes you, you freeze up a little bit. But uh, okay, we have a uh, Julie is did. Oh, there's Luke. Okay, so Norman's going to drive down and he's going to take uh, he's going to take some pictures, and we're going to see if we're going to see how many beards we're on beard and slack watch tonight. Mm -hmm. We want to see how many uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are. Addressed uh, informally, you could say. Uh, Julie, earlier, we did uh, see some. She said she saw one woman in sweatpants going into the convention center. So let's see what happens. All right. So well, we're so glad you're with us. Uh, we talked about it last night. We have a good audience tonight. Uh, Norman is now heading down to the convention center. We are going to see, We, you, you guys all tuned in here tonight, right? Because you wanted to see what the Jehovah's Witnesses look like. Well, that's what uh, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, originally, we were going to be at the Kingdom Hall, but we showed up there tonight. Nobody was there, so we didn't think that we're going to have the meeting. So we started looking online, and we saw that the Jehovah's Witnesses, many of them in this area, and I know it. Well, we're going to go forward a little bit. I want to find exactly where we're going to come in here. Uh, let's let's try here. Yeah, they're not all junk boxes. A lot of these cars are beautiful cars. I've been seeing some really fine cars. Um, but you said not many of the brothers were wearing beards of all things. They weren't doing that. So, uh, you know, we're just going to kind of focus on the doorway here and see. Uh, so, well, there, there it is inside the lobby, I guess. That's inside the center itself. So I don't know if you can see how, but I see women in dresses mostly, huh? I don't see any slacks. There's a woman in dress, the pink dress there. Yeah, but I did see one guy coming into the convention. I believe he was a Jehovah's Witness. He did have a beard and he had a T-shirt on. I mean, I don't know if I'd show up for the convention in a beard and T-shirt. <laughs> he might not have been a witness, but uh, the witnesses were coming by. And they were looking, they were looking at us signs and they were slowing down. And friends, this has been happening. This has been happening in the last number of years that we've been protesting. It seems like the witnesses are a little more eager to slow down and read the signs. They, they never did that before. Never did that before. You look and pit that on the bottom. That, that is the, uh, the convention center. That is the auditorium. Uh, you can see the witnesses uh, are leaving now. There will be another group coming in here shortly. Hopefully we'll be able to see if uh, if things are about the same. But, you know, they have to go right by us. Uh, they can't miss us uh, in their cars. They're coming out of that convention center. Then they have to drive down this road. And this road is, uh, oh, about, I'd say, a quarter of a mile long. And at the end of the road, here we are, the apostates, so to speak. and. Uh, so they can't miss us. And boy, I'll tell you what, they are getting a mouthful tonight. They are getting to see a lot of things. And I, I, as I said earlier, more and more of the Jehovah's Witnesses are actually, they're actually slowing down. We had one woman tonight come by and give us a thumbs up. A lot of PMOs going in here tonight. So take a look there. What do you see? There, there it is. All right. All right, we'll just kind of focus in here. Let me take a look and see what's happening. All right. So I guess these are probably uh, one group is exiting. And then we get another group. They had two meetings here tonight. So one group is exiting. I can see them right now. We have the cars exiting and we have cars coming. So another group is coming in. So we'll see how that all comes to being here as the new group comes in 
maybe they'll be dressed a little more relaxed. Maybe they won't be, but this group seemed to be pretty well dressed up. However, Julie did say there was a lot of, a lot of brothers not wearing ties, but I do see that most of the sisters, as you can watch, are actually, uh, are actually wearing dresses. I thought I'd see more slacks tonight, but it's not the case. Well, I'm looking out the front here. When our camera people get back, we get them all on assignment now, but we're looking out at a full moon. And, uh, yeah, well, we talk about that, right? You can remember when you were a witness, uh, they always want Well, we'll stop right there. I want you to, um, we'll stop right there. And what I'll do is I'll focus in. I do have some pictures here I want to show you. Uh, that I took screenshots of and blew it up so you'll be able to see it better. But let's take a look at some of the people. Uh, let's take a look at what they were wearing. Let's go right up here and check it out. So let's take a look right here. Now, there we see, well, there's one. Well, that was an attendee, whether she's a witness or not. But, I mean, she had slacks on and a sweatshirt on. Uh, that that was one, um, one of the persons. So let's just see what else we got here. Let's try this one. All right. Well, there's a... They're showing a man right there. That's a Jehovah's Witness man. He has a jacket on. I, I didn't see the front of him, whether they had a tie or not. I'm not sure. But look at the hair. He has long hair, right? And then let's take a look. Well, there's a well now there's a sister there that well, she has a pretty pink dress on. But then also look at look at that. COVID phobia. Boy, that witness is still kind of wearing a mask. Uh, you watch how it really made a big deal about it. And created all kinds of problems for the people. And uh, that woman still has never forgot it, I guess. And let's take a look over here. All right, well, now take a look right there. Uh, I don't know if you can see my point or not, but that woman right there, well, she's standing in a gray, she has a gray sweatshirt, sweatshirt or sweater, I think it's a sweatshirt, and she has a, a leisure pants on, you know, exercise pants. And then there's another girl with slacks on right there. And then she's talking to a brother with a beard. So how things are changing, right? And let's check this out. Well, here we have, um, all right. Uh, well, there's the woman right there. I don't know if you can see her or not, but there's the woman with the sweatpants. It looks like a sweater or a sweatshirt. And that's over here. Now look at this right here. Well, there she is again. You can see her. And uh, so... Well, look at this man right here. This in this shot right here. That man right there. He's got a beard. The man standing ready in the doorway. You can take a look. He's, he's got a. He's got like a little full-grown goatee. So things are changing. I'm telling you, things are changing in the watch hour. And let's check one more picture here. Well, okay. Well, I wanted to. One man leaning against a wall. Well, he he had sneakers on. He had a, a suit, a sport coat on but just a sweatshirt or a shirt on underneath, no tie. So I have to tell you, things are changing, not not the way it used to be. Unbelievable, huh? But uh, anyways, the people were really, the other night when we were at the um, convention center for the memorial, hey, everyone was saying, Rick, Rick, tell us when, when is, uh, you know, when, when are you going to show us the, the, the people wearing what? Well, there you have it so you can see exactly what they were doing. So I found that very fascinating that uh, they would do it. Now, the way that I feel, what would I do it? If I, if I was still one of Jehovah's Witnesses, what would I, how would I dress if I went to the memorial? Well, I would have dressed in a suit, kind of like I'm wearing here, a sport coat at least with a tie. I would have done that. But, uh, you know, maybe not everyone would have done that. So I'd like to know, how, how would you have dressed if you went to the memorial the other night? Who, who would like to comment? You're on with a 714. Go ahead. Oh, hi, Rick. It's Nadine calling in. Hello, Nadine. I'm glad you called in because I was going to ask if we could show you a picture. I don't want to do it without your permission. Yes, you can. That's what I said. I emailed it to you. <laughs> I, I got it. No, I got it, but I, I wouldn't do it. So now okay. you 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 went to the you went to the memorial. So let me get I you, did. let me get your picture up here. And I'm going to put Nadine. This is Nadine. She's the lady that's on the phone right now. Let's put her picture up there. Well, that's Nadine right there. Now, tell us about your experience, Nadine. Okay. Well, um, I wore slacks, as you can see. And 
so I went to the memorial. It was at a community center um, in the town that I live in, in California. And I got there like right when it started. And so this brother that helped me find my, my seat, he had a beard and um, he looked very nice. He was, I think he had an Australian accent. And so there was a lot of beards. A lot of the brothers had beards <laughs> and there were people that wore masks also. Oh, quite a few. And I thought, wow, why are they doing that? You know, like, yeah, you know, how can they breathe in those things? So there were masks and there were some, very few wore pants. Um, mostly the women wore dresses. So, and then there was a brother from Bethel that gave the talk. And um, he said a few strange things in the, in his talk. Um one of them was, he said, you know, wouldn't it be great to live in a world without vaccinations? And I thought, like, why is he mentioning vaccinations during the memorial talk? But anyways, um, so it was interesting. And he said some other things, too. Well, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you for sending the picture. So you look pretty. Mm -hmm. You look pretty spiffy mm -hmm. there. I mean, you were all set to go. Did you Did you go with someone just by yourself? Um, no, just I went by myself. I went out. I was gone that whole day, so I just wore that the whole day, and then that way I just went right straight to the memorial. Um, but yeah, um, he was also another thing that was interesting. Um, that I thought was he was telling people now who should partake and then he was saying if you are not if you don't have the calling uh to be in you know one of the 144,000 he said that you should not partake um because it would uh, disappoint Jehovah and he would be very upset if you partake if you're not supposed to like he was pre-warning people uh don't be don't be just taking the emblems which I thought was interesting because <laughs> maybe, maybe they got word that pe more people are going to be partaking this year. So well, that's, uh, that's that exactly, was another thing. That's exactly what I thought. I really did. And, and now, now that the watchtower has more or less made it a, a conscience matter on a lot of things, you know, how you're going to talk mm -hmm. to disfellowship ones, what you're going to wear. It's more or less a, up to your conscience. So I'm thinking that a lot right. of witness, a lot of witnesses, they're probably saying, "Well, you know, I, my my conscience is the way that I'm going to be reasoning." They might have partook. There might be the big numbers this year, Nadine. Right, right. And so he was just going on about that, and he was saying he didn't say Jesus would disapprove. He said Jehovah would disapprove. And so, but the memorial is about Jesus. So, but he was talking about Jehovah most of the evening. And then um, he was talking about the book of Revelation, um, how it's, um, it's a symbolic book. And, but the witnesses take that number, the 144,000, as literal. Everything else in Revelation is symbolic, except they take that number literal, which doesn't make any sense. And, and the brother kept saying, oh, the book of Revelation is symbolic. But he didn't say that the number was literal, which I thought was interesting. So um, let's see what I made some notes here. So basically, I think that's about it. Well, you're of very, uh, you were very observant. And this isn't the first time I heard this. They really didn't mention Jesus much. But you know what's interesting, Nadine, mm -hmm. is here you are an ex-witness. And, you know, you're, you're taking in more of the memorial talk than when you were a real witness. That's, that's exactly what I did, too. I, I, I hear the talks now and I can dissect them. But when we were witnesses, mm -hmm. we, we never dissected them. We just kind of, if we didn't get it, right. it went right, right over our head. Good for you. Right, right. And, and another thing is um, the whole atmosphere, it's supposed to be a celebration, but it feels so dark. It just feels so dark. 
it doesn't feel it's not like not a celebration in my opinion so i i just and it's boring as heck but i was just listening for the notes and then another thing that he said um was he he showed a slide there was a slide and i guess the brother put the slide up too soon so the brother from bethel said can you please take that slide down i didn't ask you to put that up yet don't put it back up until i tell you and i'm like oh my goodness he just sounded so upset that the other brother that was doing the slides put the slide up which i didn't even know what the slide really was representing it was a picture of a guy in prison they showed a prison cell and he never did explain really what that slide was about so i have no idea it was very out of place just like the comment about uh wouldn't it be great to live without um in a world without vaccinations that came out of the out of the blue out of left field so it was it was kind of interesting with that. Oh, very good one, Nadine. Thank you very much for uh, sending me the picture of you and going to the memorial and sharing your thoughts with it. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that, Nadine. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, that's Nadine. I'm looking. I'm... Oh, go ahead, Rick. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go, go ahead, Nadine. Uh, I was just going to say I'm looking forward to hear, hearing other people's experiences also. Yeah. Well, let's do that. Let's, let's do that right now. I mean, this was the most important important occasion of the year in the world of Jehovah's Witnesses. So who would like to come on and who would like to tell us their experience? Uh, go ahead. In fact, let me put the telephone number up. That might be easier for people if they don't remember the telephone line. But we'd like to hear from your experiences. You can tell us what was your experience when you went to the memorial this year? Were you uh, surprised at the way the people were dressed? Did, uh, did, was something said at the memorial that kind of rocked your boat? So see that number right there? If you call that number, you can come in and tell us your story. Uh, when I stop and think about it, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, from the Jehovah's Witness standpoint, uh, I, I can see that it must have been very, very awkward because some of the witnesses were dressed up, some weren't. So were they judging these ones? I don't know. Uh, go ahead, uh, New York City, I believe, 718. I believe that's uh, that. Yeah. Surely, yeah. Go ahead, Julie. Yeah, yep. Hey, Rick, I just wanted to know, since you were there, remember back in the day, the memorial, the people were wrapped around the hall and standing on the walls and in the library and all this stuff. But I thought in the last few years, the attendance has fallen off. So what was your, I mean, you were just at one kingdom hall, but what was your experience attendance-wise? Well, I have to tell you, uh, I originally was slated to go to a Kingdom Hall. But when I got to the Kingdom Hall, I like to get there a couple hours early because it takes us a good hour, hour and a half to set stuff up. You know, the signs and the microphones and the cameras and all of that. So we went there and I was all set to set things up. I got there at five. Nobody was there at five. Usually there's somebody there cleaning up or raking the lawn. No one's there. And then at five, quarter past five, still nobody. And at 530, there's nobody, and there's nobody around. So I'm thinking, well, maybe they're not even having a memorial in this hall. So I looked online and talked about a memorial the next town over for three or four congregations at this convention center at the hotel. So we went there. Oh. So we were set up. I didn't want to set up on their property because they could kick us off. So I set up at the road leading into the Hilton. There's only one road in. You had to pass us. But, I mean, for three or four congregations meeting, and they only had one meeting for the memorial, I, I, I have to tell you, I've seen, more, I've seen more cars at the Kingdom Hall I used to go to than all of these congregations combined. And then I sent some pictures, some people in that had cameras, and we were doing it live streaming, and the seats were not full. Uh, it, it, it just wasn't anything like, it wasn't impactful. I, I didn't come away from there saying, wow. What a big night for the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, I have said that before at some of these demonstrations, but not not last Sunday night. It, it wasn't impactful, surely. Wow. So you said four congregations and there were still empty seats? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say there was three or four. I, I don't have it in front of me. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was four, though. I'm not sure. 
but uh, there yeah. were still empty seats. We sent, we had two people with, you know, cameras that went in there and we were live streaming it and there was no, uh, they, they were not full. They were not full. No. Nope. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So they are dwindling down. Okay. People are learning. Yeah. So wasn't that good? No, that's a, well, well, what are, you know, at first I thought, well, why are they meeting in a convention? Why, why are they meeting in a hotel? Now, at first I could say, well, see, they're afraid there's not enough people showing up at the Kingdom Hall, but that might not be the case. Uh, you have to realize that, well, right now there's a lot of Kingdom Halls being sold off. So they have two and three congregations meeting in the same hall. So I've, I've got reports coming in here that some memorials, because there's three congregations in the same hall, some of the people, Jehovah's Witness people, didn't have their memorial till 9, 9.30 at night. You know, it's just kind of late, right? By the time you get out of there with your kids and everything. So uh, I can understand maybe it might not be because of twindling numbers, but I'm sure that's part of it. I'm sure that's part of it. Thank you, Shirley. Because I remember yeah. back in the day, like the uh, hall I used to go to, there was like two congregations meeting there, but whatever time had to be after sundown, so one congregate and the other um, uh, halls in the area too. Like they had, what did I say, a seven o'clock memorial, then eight o'clock and nine o'clock. So they had them stacked back to back. So I guess they're not doing that anymore. They're just renting out, you know, places. Because I do remember um, back in the day, somewhere in the Jamaica Queens area, they met at one of the public schools there. They were able to have their memorial in a um, gymnasium. I guess they combined one or two congregations back I guess when they were packed you know on the walls and everything but that's not the case anymore but I guess because I remember there was a seven o'clock memorial and eight o'clock you know and so forth so I guess that's when they started combining you know the congregations together uh yeah well the thing is that the, uh, I have to tell you this <clears throat> reports have been coming in here to the six greens that the memorial just didn't get the attendance that it was hoping for now, I can't confirm that because, you know, you have to wait about another week. By next Saturday night, we should have some pretty solid numbers. But uh, I, just, just based on what I've seen and based on what I've ta talked to a couple of other people have seen, the attendance is way down, Shirley, way down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. If you'd like to speak up, did you go to the memorial? Let's go with 336. I think it's a good friend, Jimmy Bell. Jimmy, what's up? Hey. It is, Rick. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Doing good, Jimmy. It's been a while since I've called in, but I uh, just wanted to call in tonight to uh, let you guys know what the experience that uh, John Leisure and I had here in, uh, where did we go? Uh, Clemens. Clemens, North Carolina. We picked out a kingdom hall there to go to. Excellent. So what, what did you observe? Yeah. What, what, what was it like? All right, so we decided, well, back in 2020, uh, we had planned to go and do a protest outside of the Kingdom Hall. And, of course, because of the pandemic, that was shut down. So this year, I told John back in February, I said, dude, I said, I think we need to go to the memorial this year, and I think we need to record it. And so we got our plans together and everything. Uh, I got a body camera. Uh, John got a, a little pin camera. And then we had both of our phones uh, in our suit pockets recording everything. And so when we got there, uh, of course, you know, we got there about, mm, I'd say about 20 minutes before the meeting started, maybe about 25. But uh, we get there. And of course, when you're walking in, you go through the little hallway or the lobby or whatever, you're getting love bombed by everybody. And immediately we see, you know, brothers with beards and um, then we decided, I, I went straight old school. I went suit, tie, and I even was carrying my bag with me, a service bag with me, because that's where I had my body cam at. And um, so John, he was, uh, he was just wearing a blazer with his beard, no tie. And so when we get in, we get in the auditorium area, and we're looking for seats and we wanted to get something in the middle because we had plans to do something and we wanted people to see it. And there was no seats in the middle. So we ended up having to sit up on the very front row on the right hand side. You know how they have the three sections, the, the left, middle and the right. So we were on the right hand side and uh, the two seats closest to the wall. And it was perfect because I could set my camera down 
with on my back and I can point it straight to the stage to get the whole talk recorded. Um, before the meeting started, we had an elder come up to us. And now before I say that, we decided we were going to just infiltrate. We wanted to make no waves. We didn't want to get kicked out or anything like that. Because what we wanted to do is we wanted to get people's reaction to changes and everything on camera, which we did. And so the very first person we got to talk to was an elder and come to find out he was the head elder. What do they call the Kobe now? What was a body coordinate, whatever they call yeah, they it. Call, call Kobe, yeah. He was the head elder. Yeah, he was the head elder. And so me and John started talking to him and we were just playing dumb. You know, they were asking us, you know, hey, where are y'all from? I said, I'm, I'm from Virginia. I'm down here on business. Um, I have I've been inactive for five years. And this guy, he's my buddy. He grew up in the organization, but he left many, 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 many years ago and doesn't know anything about the organization now. And so I told him, I said, well, let's go to this meeting and check it out. And so they started talking to us like, <laughs> like they wanted a Bible study with us. <laughs> and uh, so I, there was one point, um, you know, we were asking about the beard change. We were asking about the pants change. And just listening to this elder give the explanation uh, was, it was crazy. It was, it was very crazy. Now, while we were talking, we were looking around, and we did notice that there were a couple of sisters that were wearing pantsuits. Um, most of them were in dresses, uh, lots of beards, you know. Uh, I actually saw two guys wearing what Tony Morris would have called tight pants, a tight pants suit. So that we did see that. And so as we're continuing to talk to this elder, uh, another elder comes up, and I guess he was probably – I'd have to say, you, you know how you can tell what their rankings are. So I would say he was like second, second elder in the congregation. Um, so he started talking with us as well. And one of the things I, w I looked at John, I said, John, did you know that they don't have to report time anymore? He's like, do what? What? That's crazy. And then the elder is like, yeah, yeah, the publishers don't have to report time anymore. And only the pioneers do. And John was like, really? When, when did that change? And, you know, what's the scriptural per, you know, reason for changing it? And you'll see the conversation. I'll, I'll mention that here in a second. But one thing that he mentioned that I had never heard before was one of the, this elder said one of the reasons why they had to report time was back in World War II when the in Vietnam and all that when there was the draft taking place for them to be able to claim themselves as conscientious objectors or ministers they used the service record to prove that they were out preaching and they have their time and everything. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever heard that before or not, but that's what this elder told us. And so that that was interesting. Well, that did Jim, 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 Jimmy, I have to say that's very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, because I, I know, in yeah, fact, we, we, yeah, I was going to say that e even myself, I was uh, called into the draft board and uh, was going to be sent to prison because I wasn't pioneering. Uh, but uh, a lot of brothers did get off because they were putting time in. But that's interesting. Maybe years earlier they would have done that. Then they would have showed the record that they were out preaching. That's very – I never heard that before, Jimmy. Thank you. I had never heard that either. I was, I was, I was surprised. So – Anyway, so the meet and we talked to this guy for the you know until the meeting started. We've got a good twenty minutes of video on this conversation. Uh, um, then, then the meeting started, and of course we're just sitting there. I'm pretending to take notes. John is you know listening, and the way he is sitting, his phone catches everything. You know, we, we it catches everything. So. When it came to the time to do passing of the emblems, we're up there on the front row. So when the guy comes down the stage, I'm the first person he hands the stuff to. And I go ahead and I take a piece 
I'm asking to John, he takes a piece of the, the bread, we partake. And as the bread got taken back up to the stage at the end of it, the speaker partook as well. And so when they did the wine, we did the same thing. We both partook. Now, I couldn't turn around and look at the crowd to see if anybody else was partaking, but John did say he was able to, and he saw a couple of people that did partake at this particular memorial. Now, uh, the attendance at the memorial was about 206, it was 206 people, and at the end of the meeting, that elder and John ended up having a very long conversation. Um, John sent me, John sent me the video and I watched it and I'll just say, John, John looked that dude up while he's doing that. I'm talking to the other elder, the second elder. Um, and he asked me, he goes, he says, are you one of the anointed? And I looked at him and I said, uh, technically you're not supposed to ask me that question. He's like, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Oh, you've kept up on your reading. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. And then I pulled out. I had a watchtower. I had the 2017 February issue of the watchtower. And I went to that article in paragraph 12 where it says, the, you know, the governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. And I asked that elder, I was like, can you explain this to me? This doesn't make sense to me. And so I had it right there. And so you'll hear his explanation. And then we got into the shunning. Oh, one of the things I asked him, I was like, is it true that, you know, the, the family members still shun uh, people who leave the organization or get disfellowshipped or disassociated? He's like, well, we really don't like to use the word shun because it paints a negative connotation. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. I was like, and, you know, technically, you know, we can say greetings to them. And I'm like, so what about the spirit? You know, I was only, always under the understanding that, you know, family relations could continue except for the spiritual aspects. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the way it should be. Um, and then I went to him and said, so I have an elder right here in front of me telling me, that the family relations should continue minus the spiritual stuff. He's like, yeah, yeah, it should. And I was like blown away by that. I got him, I got him saying it as well. So then I had another young guy come up, come up to us while we were talking. He was about 26. He was just recently reinstated and you know, started talking to him a little bit and it was getting towards the end. And I looked at him. I said, Hey, here's my card. He said, I said, I'm enjoying talking. You seem like a smart kid. I said, here's my card. I said, uh, look me up on YouTube. And he goes, uh, is it anti watchtower stuff? I said, mm, maybe a little, but you'll find out if you'll check it out. And he's like, Oh no, no. Uh, respectfully. I just, I'm not going to do that. Blah, 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 blah. And I ended up walking out the Kingdom Hall with him a little later, and we were still chatting. And so uh, we got everything on tape. Um, John has had a busy week this week working. Um, but we're getting, me and him are getting together this Wednesday to do the discussion portion of the video. And then hopefully, he's got to edit all that too. So once that's all done, hopefully next weekend, maybe Friday or Saturday, I don't know when, but we'll have that new video out and it's going to be under the round table title because we're bringing the round table back with me and John Leisure. And we're going to have female guests. Uh, Laurel is going to be our first one, but we're going to have female guests fill the third spot. So stay tuned. It's y'all are going to eat this video up. I'm telling you it's to hear these elders say what they said was just mind blowing. So yeah, that was our experience. Well, thank you, Jimmy, for sharing that with us. My goodness gracious, looking forward to your video coming out. And John too, he does an excellent job. You make a good team. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rick. All right, my goodness, that's Jimmy Bell. How, how about can we go to eight six zero? Did you go to the memorial eight six zero? You run with us. Go ahead. I don't know if that might be me, Rick, 
but this is Deborah from Brandy. Uh, yeah, 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 that is your, that is your Deborah, that is your Deborah, yep. Yeah. I remember way back when um, my brother was old enough to go into the military for uh, Vietnam, and my father had him go to the elders to write him a letter stating that he was not eligible because he was a Jehovah's Witness. And they had to look at his time reported. But then at that particular time, my brother wasn't like active and he wasn't baptized. But yeah, they back then, that's when they were a little bit more lenient about things. But yeah, I remember exactly what uh, Jimmy is talking about, that it started in World War II, World War II that they had to uh, bring their time forward. For um, to get out of the, going into the, the military. And as far as, and well, I was born in 55. And as far back as I can remember, I was born in. And yes, when the disfellowshipping started, that I was aware of, it was always you could communicate with the disfellowship, but you could never talk to them about spiritual things at all. He's absolutely correct about that. That's that's the way we were in our congregation. I don't know about others, but yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Tom Brandy, that's uh, that's what you could do. You couldn't discuss spiritual matters if it was a business matter or even a family matter. I mean, you wouldn't have a long, drawn-out conversation, but you could talk to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember because even. Um, other family members that had left the congregation that they were, you know, we, we talked to them and everything and we carried on all kinds of conversations, but anything spiritual, mm -mm, it was, it was mixed. But anyway, yeah, I had to put in my two cents. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thank you. Stop, Brandon. Good to hear from you. Haven't heard from you for a while. Keep up the good work. Keep cranking away at it. Thank you. Always, always love you. Love you too. Thank you. All right. Well, there you have it. I mean, more and more people, are waking up and smelling the coffee. They're leaving the watchtower. Now, you know, they made those announcements uh, about the dress code, you know, let, about a week before, maybe even less than a week before the memorial. Uh, don't you think that this is really going to, don't you think it was poor on the watchtower's part to announce it so close to the memorial? Uh, well, what I, what I saw there the other night when I was there is a mixed bag of people. Some people were dressed up like it was, you know, Easter Sunday, like Christians do. And then other people were dressed up in T-shirts and sweatpants. It was really a mixed bag. That, that's going to cause a lot of dissension and division in the congregations. Uh, let's go to 540. I think that's Pixie. Go ahead, Pixie. Hey, I hope everybody's having a good weekend. Are you going to have a Resurrection Sunday Watchtower six screens experts uh, on tomorrow? Uh, not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. We missed it. Uh, well, in the, we, we're not tomorrow. It didn't come out. In that, well, we'll talk about it a little bit next week, but we hoping that would have happened, uh, Pixie. <laughs> uh, what I'd like to hear next week, then, if you do it on a Sunday, I'd like to hear about the road to Emmaus and some of the Jesus bodily resurrection stuff, because... It's like the witnesses skipped over that entire thing in the Bible. Well, you're right with that. Well, we'll talk about that next Saturday, next Sunday. And, yeah, and yeah. what I want to say, what I want to say about the dress code, this is always my favorite time of year. Fashion is my thing. As a born-in witness kid, we always dressed. I think half of this is the social and economic reset that we're under because. The stores this year did not even have like um, ladies' Easter dresses or children's little dress outfits and things. I I think we I think civilization is officially over. <laughs> well, you're not uh, you're not too far off with that, uh, Pixie. It, it's changed. I mean, obviously everything is different. It's upside down. Uh, the things that we're seeing taking place, not only in the world of religion, the watchtower, but just, just the world in general. It, it's not making any sense, uh, it, really. Uh, even I'm not to be political about it all, but people, you have to take a look. If you live in a country and things are just messed up, geez, you, you've got you to look at the political agenda 
They're, they're the people that are running the country. But to have the things we are seeing take place, it's just not sensible. It's not what a sensible government would do. No. Also, I noticed today I looked in on the Vatican on my television, and um, they're going to have a jubilee next year. And the Watchtower was talking something about a jubilee, too. So I think all the religions seem to be getting together on the same page, maybe. And then uh, the terrible incident here in Baltimore has been really a crisis for the whole country. And that's going to impact cars and sugar and stuff. So we're in for a bumpy ride. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that, that's for sure. But <clears throat> everything is, the thing is, always bear in mind. And I always say this, as terrible as things are and appear to be, it's like a mixed world. There's also other good things, which is crazy to me. Uh, you know, the restaurant, just, just for example, we know the economy, things are so expensive. I mean, you go to the food market, you pay a lot of money for everything. But the restaurants over here in Massachusetts are packed. I mean, I, I, I can't believe the amount of people visiting restaurants, buying food like crazy. I'm, I'm not sure. I've never seen such a schizophrenic economy in my, in my own entire life. It's nutty. Uh, you have, on one hand, pe people just scrounging around trying to put food on the table. On the other hand, the restaurants are packed. It's very schizophrenic. Uh, I don't think well, it's... We a, have yeah. We have a lot of people that don't know how to cook, and when I tell people to take a strip of bacon and wrap it around a, a chicken thigh and put it in the oven, they act like it's a miracle. <laughs> well, well that's, that's interesting you say that because, uh, yeah, the stores, are, there's restaurants opening, and, of course, I'm in the sign business, so I talk to a lot of the restaurants, and we've got a bunch of them opening right where I live. And there's one that's open. It's going to be opening recent, very soon, I should say. And it, it's all food like to go for the most part. Uh, mm -hmm. It's you know women working. They they stop in after work. They 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 get their little bowl or whatever it would be. They take it home and throw it in the microwave. That seems to be the wave of the future. A lot a lot of, a lot of modern day women aren't cooking. I'm not picking on them because they're working. But th that might be one of the reasons people are going to restaurants and buying food out. Because they're working and don't have time to do it. Well, have a good Sunday. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll see if we can't get to some talking about that road to Emmaus. That'd be wonderful. Thank you, Pixie. Okay. All Bye. right. So anyways, if you'd like to speak up, did you go to the memorial? Did you go to the memorial? Would you? How would you dress if you went to the memorial? Would you wear a suit and a tie if you were a man? Would you wear slacks if you were a woman? Well, go ahead. You're on with us. Uh, go ahead. You're on. I think it's JP. Go ahead. Hi. Good evening, Rick. Yes. Yeah, I went to the I went to the memorial on Sunday, and uh, it was at kind of like how I think uh, Nadine said it was like at a banquet hall that they rented out, and it wasn't probably there was probably a little over 200 people that showed up, and I showed there right on time when it started, when the song started. I had some family there, but I didn't sit with them because I wasn't sure if I was going to partake or not. So since I wasn't sure if I was going to partake, I uh, just sat by myself. And um, so when I went there, there was a, a brother that helped me um, be seated. And what I what I can say is just about everybody on the body of elders, all the servants, they all have facial hair and there's all different styles, anything from goatees to soul patches to full beards. There's not any really uh, anything uniform. So I, I don't know how it's going to go with a beard situation. I, I didn't see any really any pants or anything, but I really wasn't expecting to, because I think since it's a memorial, I think people were going to dress down a little more. All the elders and servants, anybody like that had a, a tie on. I just wore a, just a dress shirt with some slacks and dress shoes. And uh, I, from what I can tell, 
because I did listen to a few other people that did post the memorial talk, and it's pretty much the same uh, outline that they must get because I, I listened to one, and it was from a different country, and it was basically word for word with this uh, memorial talk in the other country was exactly what I heard. They give the same illustration about um, you're being a guest to like a wedding feast and they do it in order to make you not want to partake. Like you would be disruptive, you know, to the wedding and similar thing I've heard. Like there were, he was saying something similar to um, that if you partake, it would be very, you know, and you, and you, and you're not worthy of partaking or you're not supposed to, that would be something that would be, you know, highly offensive to Jehovah. They didn't mention, you know, how Jesus would even feel about it, but it was about, it would be offensive to Jehovah and that. So I ended up uh, partaking. It was kind of a strange the way they had it set up. It wasn't like a normal kingdom hall where there's like a center main row with like two outer rows on the outside they had it set up kind of like a theater style, like a half circle. So there was some straight rows right in front of the, right in front of the stage. And then the other two sets of rows on the side were kind of like kitty cornered, kind of like to form like a half circle. And I was sitting on one of the outside ones. So when the, when the bread came around, I did end up partaking because I was, that's something that I feel in my heart that we're supposed to do. I mean, I'm a Christian and that's something that I feel that I'm supposed to do. So I did it. And I think possibly out of the over 200 people that were there, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was probably the only one that partook. There was a few people that stared at me and uh, it was kind of awkward. A couple of them I knew because where I actually went, I didn't go to some, uh, congregation that I didn't know it was actually my home congregation and I've been faded you know for a few years and the elders really haven't bothered me or anything so I don't know if by partaking I put myself in their crosshairs or whatever I'm not really worried about it but I was expecting them maybe to come by today but they didn't show up but it is pretty rainy day here out in California for the most part. So it didn't seem likely they were going to come by. And then they, I think they have their special day assembly tomorrow. So, but I am expecting that they might come by possibly and question me about stuff, but I am already prepared to uh, confront them. And I even have a little recorder ready too, just in case I feel like recording on my mic, you know, I don't know it's not a huge deal to me to have them on recording. I just mostly want to be able to give them a good answer to give them something to think about and hopefully wake them up. But yeah, it wasn't easy partaking. It was actually a little intimidating and scary, but once I ate the bread, I knew I was already committed. So when the wine came around, I did it. And, um, I'm pretty sure they're going to ask me something because even one of the elders that was happening to be passing out the bread and the wine that was in my section and, and in my row, it was actually one of the elders that first studied with me when I first got reinstated about, you know, 18 years ago. And he studied with me at, like shortly after I got reinstated for several months. So I've known him for quite a long time. So I don't know that that was just about uh, the only thing I could say with uh, my experience going to the memorial, but it did feel good to partake and to, uh, you know, stand up for Christ and show Watchtower that, you know, they just can't take that away from people. And I think it'll, it's going to help, you know, the, the numbers go up. I mean, they had a memorial after ours cause it was after that one I went to and it was, a later one, I almost wanted to stay for the second one and partake twice, but I just decided to leave because I had to work the next day. But yeah, Rick, that was my experience. I just wanted to share that with everybody. Well, thank you, JP. No, I enjoyed that. Now, that took a lot of courage to do that. Well, good for you. Good for you, JP. You're a good man. Don't you ever change, as we always say. Thank you. 
All right, so right. let's go to let's go to six o two. Looks like Gil, Gilbert Gonzalez. What do you think, Gilbert? Well, I don't know. I think Jesus might get a little upset if he put part took twice. I mean, come on. No, just kidding. <laughs> that was good. Hey, um, hey, Rick. Um, as you know, I can't go to the memorial, right? Because uh, Watchtower sent me that letter saying, you know, you can't, you know, you can't be near us. But anyways, make a long story short, and I framed that letter. But anyways. Every single kingdom hall, have you noticed that all the chairs are lined up in a row? They're all lined up, all, all of the, everywhere they go. This is supposed to be the happiest occasion. And then what do you do? You put a TV screen and they have karaoke melodies, kingdom melodies. There's like a karaoke scene. The point I was trying to make when I talked about this with my friends is I always say, you know, when I talk to people that when Jesus came, he elevated the human being. If we don't have to be running around like the Mongolians or the, you know, like the marauders of the past, we can, we can, we can not act like animals and we can act like humans that are aspiring to be better spirits. And, and so what do you do? It's the most memorable occasion. It's the dullest uh, occasion. And I, I was upset when I was a job builder because the memorial was supposed to be special. Instead of having round tables where everybody is looking at each other, like in a wedding, you have round tables and everybody's gathered and talking, and then you break bread. You, you can have the ceremony over here and says, brothers, when the ceremony is over, we're going to come over here and there's going to be vegetables, right? Fruits and, and food and what, you know, drinks, everything and, and dancing and singing. And then also the reason I mentioned the karaoke, go to other religions. They elevate the religious experience by having choirs, by having bands. So the point I'm trying to make, simplify it, is that everything about the Jehovah's Witness Memorial is bringing down the human experience. Even your dog would be bored. But everywhere else you go, you elevate the human experience. So the, the, the issue is not whether you could wear a slack or a dress or whether you wear a beard is do you go and contribute to the elevating of the memorial, the elevating of your celebration? And the Jehovah's Witnesses are flat zero. They bring everything down. Kind of like that ELO song in the 1970s. Don't bring me down, down. I think it was the 80s. <laughs> That's the Jehovah's Witness memorial in a nutshell. And that, that bothered me when I was an elder. It was so boring. Well, I, I have to agree with you. I mean, Jehovah's Witness meeting is not just a memorial, but convention talks. Everything is so boring. It just amazes me that yeah. they get people to take notes and suck the stuff all up. It's amazing. Well, thank you, Gilbert. Oh, did yeah. I, did I make you look good? Oh, you always make me look good. But I mean, okay, okay. Yeah, always. Well, thank you thank for doing that. Thank you for doing here, that. We're here to make the show look good. Right? Oh, we gotta make we gotta make it look good. Yes, thank you, Gilbert. Well, listen, that's Gilbert. But you, but you know, I have to tell you sincerely. Well, let's bring on. Let's go to six two six. It looks like. Go ahead, six two six. You're on with us. So yeah, I attended a memorial at a Kingdom Hall not too far from where I live. I basically went there posing as, I guess you could say, an interested person. Not not a study, but just someone who noticed uh, an invitation on my door and decided to check it out. Well, I'd say about three quarters of the grown men in the congregation were all wearing beards and roughly half the women were wearing either slacks or in some cases jeans. Me personally, I just wore casual clothing because to me it was no big deal. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't record because in California it's illegal to record people without their knowledge or consent. But I did have a bit of an interesting conversation with an elder afterwards. And I told him, you know, he asked me what I knew about JWs. And I said, well, I know you're the guys who go door to door. You know, I knew you guys don't celebrate holidays, things like that. But I've done a little research on you guys. And, well, I mentioned the Australia Royal Commission. And uh, he didn't know what that was, which didn't surprise me, knowing how sheltered these people are. And I went into details on what it was about. And of course, 
I got what I was expecting to hear. Oh, that's apostate-driven lies. And my response was, well, even if it's from an apostate, that doesn't automatically make it false. I mean, a factually true statement is still factually true, regardless of where it comes from. I mean, you don't, you don't lose the ability to tell the truth just because of what you believe. And he looked at me like, like this was the most mind-blowing thing he's ever heard in his life. Like he had never even thought about that. And another elder overheard us talking and he was like, he was just glaring at me <laughs> this entire time and making me, and, and I think this other guy really uncomfortable. And, uh, I mean, I, I, I said, uh, you know, I asked him about the Catholic church and I said, you know, they've had a major problem. Is that driven, you know, uh, is that just lies perpetrated by former Catholics? And he, he didn't have a word to say about that. And I mentioned it because I knew that the JWs excoriated the Catholic Church for years about that scandal. And for years, they, they were practically gloating. Look at how bad this makes them look. But when it comes to, to, to their own, it's like they, they, they just put their fingers in their ears. I mean, cognitive dissonance at its worst. But anyway, the other elder who was overhearing our conversation basically said, you know, if you're truly interested, you know, we'll send somebody to your home to have a Bible study. But if you continue discussing this, uh, your invitation to attend uh, services here or whatever will be revoked. So nothing, nothing has changed. You know, you know, I, I had high... You know, I went in there thinking, okay, maybe things will be a little bit different, but no, it's it's just the same crap. You know, you're not allowed to question anything. And I can't, you know, I wish I could say I was shocked by his words, by, by him saying, you know, my invitation to attend will be revoked and that they might call the police on me if I show up. But no, I, I can't say I'm at all shocked. So anyway... That was the first time I had set foot in a kingdom hall in seven or eight years, I think. And yeah, uh, safe to say, I never will again. Well, thank you for sharing that story with us. I mean, that was courageous to go there and do that. But it shocks me that even the elder that you talked to didn't know anything about the Australia Royal Commission. That is crazy. Uh, geez, that's all over the place. You'd think that it's actually it's enough to make a person throw up. It's so sick how even elders, people who were supposed to be in the know, they know diddly squat about Jehovah's Witnesses. They only know the good parts that the witness organization tells them, but they do any research, they would never do it. Thank you for sharing that with well, us. The, that was fascinating. Yeah. Well, the, the, the other elder was a bit older than the one that I was talking to. Um, he appeared to, in fact, the one I was talking to appeared to be a little younger than me. I, I'm 35. This guy appeared to be in his early thirties. Um, so I, I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that the younger ones are less informed. Well, actually, actually now that I think about it, I, I'm I guess I should be shocked that none of them know about it, that, that any of them don't know about it, or maybe he was just playing dumb, but, um, but yeah, well, when I asked him if it was true about the, you know, up until that point, the older elder was just listening. But when I asked him, is it true about the two witness rule? That's when the other guy stepped in. And because uh, he knew it was going to get pretty ugly from there. Boy, it just, it just amazes me how they can just uh, go along with us all. And even knowing that they're lying to you, some of those elders know it's terrible that they go along with the organization and they will lie, lie, lie right through their teeth. Well, thank you very much for sharing that story with us. Very appreciative. Thank you. All right. So there we have another memorial story. Did you go to the memorial? Did you go to the memorial? What did you witness? What did you see? You know, in fact, I have to tell you something about the dress code. The dress code, of course, I, I was wondering because it only came out about a week before only came out about a week before the memorial. But, you know, can you guys all remember for decades, I mean, many decades, the Jehovah's Witness hierarchy 
uh, was always saying how clean Jehovah's people are. And they are different. They are set apart from the world. And then they would always use the example that our dress and our grooming, blah, 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 we show respect uh, in our appearance and we honor God with our appearance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How many times have you heard that? How many times have you heard that when you wanted Jehovah's Witnesses that we're a clean people, we're Jehovah's clean people, we're different than all the rest? Well, you might as well throw all of that out the window like a wash rag, right? Because that no longer is apropos. You can dress however you want, basically. I mean, within the limits, obviously. But it just shows you. What this shows me, by them taking away the dress code, that they have little respect, especially during the memorial. Well, why would you eliminate the dress code you know, a week before the memorial? That is not sensible. I mean, I think that maybe it could be to get more people there. You know, a lot of people don't have a suit. A lot of ladies don't really have a nice formal dress. So let you wear whatever you want. Just come to the memorial. Then that could have been one of the reasons because I really want to get the numbers up. But the reports I got coming in here, friends, I have to tell you something. The reports coming into the six screens are not that pretty. I've got more and more people telling me that, Rick, the numbers are down. I, I witnessed it myself the other night when I went and protested. You got three or four congregations meeting. There was nothing there. It was diddly squat. It wasn't anything to get excited about. And maybe that's happening all over the country. So maybe the governing body is really starting to see the, the hard, cold facts of this. You know, you've heard these people so long. Many of them are saying, that's it. And did you know, did you know in fact, in fact, I feel that there's two uh, half, I, I think half of the Jehovah's Witnesses are PIMO, physically and mentally out. So if the Watchtower was saying they have over 8 million witnesses, I would say that half of those people could be 4 million PIMOs. So they're just going in a perfunctory way. They're just going to the meetings out in service so they don't get disfellowship. So that's something to, to bear in mind, folks. I mean, we have got a changing organization. Uh, and, and you know what, really, if at the memorial, what it reminded me of, because when I went to the memorial Sunday night, last Sunday night, of course, I was outside. I wasn't inside. We had some camera people go and take pictures. But I'm seeing people. I see one woman in sweatpants, a sweatshirt, a number of guys with beards, uh, a number of people just dressed informally. And what it reminds me of is a bunch of kids, a bunch of kids who have never drank alcohol, uh, and then all of a sudden they turned to be 21 or 18, whatever the limit would be, and now they get wasted. It's very much what happened there at the memorial the other night. It was like a bunch of people who never drank alcohol, and now all of a sudden, yeah, you can drink it. Now you reach the age, and they get wasted. It's the same thing I think happened there. People just let their guard down. I mean, I can see, you know, still dressing kind of casual, but some of the things I saw at the memorial the other night, I saw one guy in a T-shirt. I mean, I mean, I believe he is a witness. I don't know. But would you wear a, a T-shirt to the most sacred meeting of the year? Would you wear sweatpants and sweatsuit? Absolutely not. So, you know, I have to tell you, thing, things are really, really changing. So it's like, you know, as soon as the witnesses have a chance to, oh, look at this, we, the dress code is let down. We can do whatever we want. And that's exactly what happened. So I just thought you might find that fascinating. Did anyone want to mention anything else about the memorial? Did you go to the memorial this week? Did, how did you feel? How, how was it? We'd like to hear your thoughts on it. All right. Okay. Well, anyways, let's move on then. Let's move on. I found this news article. My wife sent this to me. Uh, I found it very interesting. A Jehovah. Now, listen to this story. Put yourself in this position. A Jehovah's Witness finds a blood vial and a can of beans in a package that she ordered. Now, you say, well, what is that all about, Rick? Well, I'm going to tell you what it's all about. Uh, I'm going to put a picture of her up here right now. Just give me a second. This is a Jehovah's Witness woman in Tennessee. And so she ordered some dresses online for the memorial. She wanted to go to the memorial. She wanted to look pretty. She wanted to look nice. She ordered some nice dresses. But something went wrong with the order. 
This is the woman right here. We put her up here. Well, that's the woman right there. She's Jehovah's Witness. And uh, she claimed that she was left in a flood of tears after she found, get this now, a vial of blood in her delivery from the dress company she ordered the dresses from. Uh, she's saying it's the worst. It, it, this couldn't have happened to the worst person. She, she claims it, it was just too much for her. She couldn't take it. And she says she's the worst person, and it happened to her. It's the worst person you could ever send this to. Anna Elliott from Cookerville, Tennessee, explained that she ordered several dresses from a clothing brand to wear to the up-and-coming memorial. All right, that's okay. So earlier this month, Anna, 23, was horrified when she allegedly received a vial of blood in a can of Mexican beans beneath the clothes that was sent to her by Federal Express. Wow, poor Anna. Now, what would you, what would you do if that happened to you? I mean, you order something from Amazon or wherever it would come from, and now all of a sudden you say, wow, look what I got in here. Well, let me show you what she found in there. This is what she found in the package. Put it up there. That's what she found in the package that she ordered. It was a vial of blood in a can of beans. She was left horrified uh, that this happened to her. I mean, you would be too, wouldn't you? Uh, getting a, I mean, being a Jehovah's Witness, I mean, you're very schizo on blood. Oh, my goodness, it would freak you out. She thought at first it was a practical joke, and maybe it was even some type of a Halloween decoration. But Anna realized the sample was actually from a blood laboratory. Yeah. And she immediately panicked. Well, you'd panic too. I'd panic too. I found a vial of blood in a box that I ordered something from. Uh, well, she said that she had a lifelong major phobia with blood. Well, did you have a lifelong major phobia with blood when you were one of Jehovah's Witnesses? I think I did. I think I did. Boy, if you bought a piece of meat, I'd make sure I washed all the juice off, that red juice, that was blood. I'd make sure I washed that off or anything bloody you wouldn't touch. I mean, we had this phobia. So poor Anna here, I'm not sticking up for her, but she just freaked out. Uh, she uh, she never realized in, in a million years that you could get a can of beans in a vial of blood in your package that was delivered to you. And you say, wow, that is, a, how, how did that ever happen? You say, how in goodness name's sake did this ever happen? But it was real. And uh, I mean, when you when you were witness, it would be worse, believe me. If I, if, I, if I got a package now with a vial of blood and a can of beans, I'd be concerned, but I don't think I'd break out crying about it. I'd say somebody made a mistake. But uh, geez, Jehovah's Witnesses, they, they, they put this sacredness on blood. It represents life itself. And boy, this uh, when she got that package, she just flipped out. So she did get a hold of Federal Express, and they claim that what happened, and this is an explanation to everything, they claim what happened is a package opened up, and one of the drivers for Federal Express, he didn't know what, what, what to do with the can of beans and the vial of blood. So he figured it came from Anna's package, so he put it in that. So it was a mistake on Federal Express's part. But uh, I have to tell you something. That would really freak you out, wouldn't it? So, you know, the phobia on blood. I had it when I was one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and you probably had it too. It would really make you frightened if, if, if that ever happened to you. Uh, go ahead. You're on with us. Hey, Rick. Uh, yes. Hi. You know, my biggest question is the article that I sent you. How would they know that she was a Jehovah's Witness? I mean, somebody had to know something somewhere to put vile blood. I mean, did they know, do you think, that she was a witness? And that's why they put the vial of blood in there, just to be mean to her? Or that's, that's the impression that I got. But maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know. Well, no. I mean, what I, what I was thinking there, Susan, is well, this, this, this was in the Mirror in London. That's a newspaper. And that's where I got the information from my wife, Susan, sent to me. But the thing is, I'm just trying to think out loud here. 
and I'm thinking, why, why was it even brought up that she was a witness? Well, I mean, that it's because of the phobia on blood. Somehow, some way, she either reported it to the newspaper or maybe Federal Express or someone said she's making more of a big deal out of this than there is. But would you make a big deal out of it? If you, if you got a vial of blood yes, and it can't have been... Yes, I wasn't a witness. Well, what, what would you do, I Susan? Well, I, I call the police or find... I mean, I do something. I sit and think and then decide what I was going to do because there's a lot of disease in blood today. I mean, not that I'm freak, you know, still freaking out because I'm a witness, but there is a lot of disease in blood. And why did someone send that to her? That's what would make me... Either they were trying to you know, make some kind of a statement. And if it was just a hundred and one coincidence that she got it, why? I mean, that's very dangerous to receive someone's blood. You know, what if it was, what if it was eight blood or what if it were, um, had some kind of, what if it had COVID in it or whatever? I mean, it's dangerous. Well, you're right with that. In fact, even the article goes on further to say, that when Federal Express was notified of it, you know, Anna evidently called Federal Express and they said that, you know, one of the bags, one of the bags opened up. And so they put it in, in Anna's package by mistake. But uh, Federal Express actually went to the blood lab uh, where it came from. And they said, yes, that was an actual blood sample. And they said that, you know, they really weren't sure if uh, everyone coming in there did not have hepatitis or some other some other virus of some type. So I mean it would freak you out. It would freak you out. So you think that you think that that Anna has a right to sue Federal Express? Susan, what do you think? Well I don't know. I mean that would be her decision. She has to determine how much danger she was in, but this is this kind of kind of a uh, there's more to this story that we don't know about. I don't know what's going on. But what, I mean, she ordered dresses. Dresses and blood have nothing to do with each other. Why would they? I don't know. Yeah, no, it didn't, it didn't make sense. But I, I wanted to bring that up tonight because, you know, there's these freaky stories, crazy stories. That, yeah. uh, But I also understand that it would be problematic even for a non-Jehovah's Witness to get a package like that. But for Jehovah's Witness to get a package like that, I mean, oh, when, yeah. were you very, were you very cautious around blood and touching blood or anything like that when you were witness to him? Yeah, I was, and it took me years, even as I, you know, left being in the so-called truth. It took me a long time to get over blood and a lot of other things. You know, it, it, you just don't do it overnight. So, if you were just, you know, we eating your way out of this blood thing and all of a sudden this happens to you, it just set you back. So. Oh yeah, no, I, 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 I had a phobia over blood. I really, really did. I, I, I just, you know, the way the watchtower taught it and, you know, don't touch a blood sausage, don't eat anything that has blood in it. I mean, all kinds of rumors were passed around that even Hershey bars or wine had blood in it. So, you know, I, I was very cautious uh, not not to eat certain things, even hot dogs. Some hot dogs had blood in it. So you really were always put on guard. But, you know, I can remember my mother when I was a young person. And, of course, I was trying to be a loyal witness at the time. And I can remember I was around 10 or 12 years old. And my mother would uh, buy, you know, juicy steak, for example, or even hamburger. It will be red. And I'd say, hey, mom, isn't that blood? Oh, no, Rick, that's not, that's not blood. That's meat juice. Well, I got news for you. My mother wasn't telling me the truth. That, that, that is blood. I've gone to a butcher since then, since I've been out. And I'd say to the butcher, what, what is this reddish, juicy looking, watery, reddish look on the meat? He says, that's blood. And it is blood. But, you know, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they, they, they eat red meat. They eat bloody meat. They don't even realize it. So, I mean, I was panic-stricken, panic-stricken when I was younger. I'd wash the meat off. I would make sure I wouldn't take it because Jehovah didn't like that. Boy, we were all a bunch of paranoids in the watchtower. Thank you, Susan. Thank you very much so, for, send, for sending that to me. I appreciate it. Okay. You're welcome.
All right, let's go to 213. 213, you're on with us. Go ahead. Hey, Rick, how you doing? Hey, I'm cranking away at it. Hey, Rick, I have a million-dollar question that I've never heard an answer to. If a person, if one of the anointed is put on public reproof, do they still partake? Well, I'll, t I'll even go a little further. If one of the anointed is disfellowship, do they still partake? And the answer to that is yes. Oh, okay. I never heard anybody give an answer to that because I remember a, a, an elder was at one of my congregations. He was put on public reproof, and I have never never saw him partake after that. You know, he used to before, but then I thought maybe they – deleted his anointed anointed ship <laughs> i didn't know you know but you said that they still can partake huh? oh yeah no in fact that's between them and jehovah that that that's that's the ruling oh. that's the ruling from the watchtower now but if one is disfellowshipped you know they well they can still go to the kingdom hall people just won't talk to them but they can still go there and partake yeah yeah. And Rick, do you remember back in the like eighties there was a rumor going around that there was blood in snicker bars and they were telling us we shouldn't eat snicker bars? Uh well up here they call it well those Hershey bars. You know, don't don't eat a Hershey bar because it had blood in it. Then I heard there was also blood in Dairy Queen ice cream. Then there was blood in hot dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then there was blood in uh wine even, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I stopped eating Snicker bars. Now, who I used to love Snicker bars, but after I heard that, I said, "No, nah, they're not," because I want to. You know, I don't want Jehovah to be mad at me. <laughs> well, you know, we took it, we took it really seriously. We really, really did. I mean, I was literally paranoid with the blood situation. Re really, uh, if I got a little cut, for example. Oh, I'd make sure I wash that cut and put a Band-Aid on it and make sure I don't touch anything that someone else could touch because I could be blood guilty. I mean, seriously, it was too much, too much. This organization drives people crazy, you know? Yeah. And Rick, do you know if, um, you know, from your sources, did they eliminate marking and public recruiting people or do they still do that? Uh, they still do it, but it's not done as emphatically as it was. It, it's more or less done almost privately. They, they, they I'm, I'm sure they would do it. I haven't heard of it recently, but the way that it seems to be being done now, in the, my understanding is, you know, there's a lot of gossip. Kingdom halls are a gossip bid. And, you know, when someone's doing something wrong, even though it's not announced from the stage, you know, the word gets out. So these people are kind of like silently shunned or they, they can't participate. You know, they're not invited to gatherings and what have you, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Rick. Hey, you're very welcome. Always good to hear from you. Thank you very much, John. All right. Well, we're going to have to end it there. We got Eric. He's on the, uh, he's in the batter's box, ready to come up with his program, uh, Awakening After the Watchtower. But I want to thank everyone for coming in. But before we leave, I want to show you the secret words. Uh, you know, we're really hoping to be able to give these Rick. books. Uh, I guess some really. Rick. Yes, Zach. Yep. Rick. Exactly. I just wanted to say one thing about what you were just now talking about. I, I, just to, to um, add context. Um, I was really little when they did have that thing about there was blood in certain things. But I think they didn't directly say um, blood. They said look for a certain ingredient. And the ingredient was lecithin. They said if there was lecithin, then that, then that would suggest there was blood in it. And, um, lecithin is soy-based. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm saying this is what they were saying. That's what you look for on your candy. You look to see if it said lecithin. And, and, it, and it, there was an unless, unless it was something with fruit. That's all I know. I can't explain any of it, but that's, that's what I know. That's what a kid would know. You look for lecithin. Well, no, I remember that too, but there was also another ingredient 
that was closely spelled the same. And it added, added a lot of, con I, I can't remember really right now, Zach, but it was spelled very, it was spelled very similar. So a lot of the witnesses were getting less of thin mixed up with this other ingredient. And they're saying, oh, that has that. But I can remember the witnesses debating it. No, 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 it's not that. It's just the wrong spelling. This is what you have to look for. But it caused so okay. much confusion, Zach. So yes, much. But my, my point, the point I'm making is they didn't say um, just that there's blood in it. They, there was an ingredient you were to look for. And the one I remember was less of thin. Well, the, the watchtower might have said look for less of thin, but, you know, the word in the witness world was, oh, that has blood in it. Don't eat a Hershey bar. Don't, don't eat that Dairy Queen ice cream. You know, it, it, was, it, was, it was paranoia is what it was. It was foolish. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, Zach. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, good. All right, so anyway, we'll go back to the secret word. Uh, no, nobody said the secret words tonight. I, I, we have two words. I've got books to give away here. So we got a sealed envelope here. Let's see what the secret words were. Now, what we'll do here is we'll give everyone a shot. You can call right in. Just call that number. And if you can say the secret word, if you can, if you know what word. See, what happens is during the course of our night, if anyone calls in and says a word that is in this envelope, you get a prize. Now, tonight what I've got here, I've got two beautiful books. I've got some already on the way to Dick and Gawney. But I've got two beautiful books here that are just wonderful. They were given to us by a man, Nathan Natus. You know him. And he, uh, look at this, a people for his name. You might not be able to see that, but a people for his name. Uh, this is the history of Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, you love that book. It's a great book. And this way, The Way to Paradise. I also got millions now living, will never die. But you'll get, you'll get a couple of old witness republications if you can guess the word. So, I'm going to give you a clue. No one got the word tonight, but I'm going to give you a clue. So what I want you to do is when I give you the clue, someone can call in and, and state what it is, or I'll be watching our YouTube here, and then you'll be able to get the prize as well. So I'm going to give you a clue. All right. You live in New York at Bethel. What would this word be? All right. You are a full time you are a full time worker at Watchtower. What would that word be? You you got it, Dick. Beth <laughs> Dick, you, you got it again, Bethelite. Okay. All right. So I already get your other books on the way, so it looks like you're gonna get some more. Uh okay. Th thank you, Dick. I I got your address. I got your address. You, you, you and Connie are gonna like the books I'm sending you. All right. So now we had another word. Well, we had another word. Now, come on, you guys. In fact, uh, hold on now, Dick. I gotta look back here. We had Bethelite nine fifty. Uh, well, it was almost a tie, Dick. But I think you were first. So we did have. Um, yep. Uh, Robert, I believe Dick was first. Yeah. He's coming on YouTube. Okay. Now I'm gonna give you another one here. I got some books I want to give away. So anyways, this, this would be the term. A full-time preacher for the Jehovah's Witness religion. Publisher. Nope. Nope. Pioneer. Nope. All right. Let's move up. Uh, this also could be a sex position. This also could be a sex position. Hello. Yes. It's missionary, isn't it? It's missionary, yes. You you got it. I I, I didn't want to have to add that in there, but <laughs> but I didn't know how people would react to it, but that is a term, right? Missionary. So yeah, yeah. yeah so what's your name, sir? Uh Calvin. Calvin, well thank you. Now I got I got I got a couple books here for you. Would you like those? Okay. So what I yeah, oh wait a minute you're in you're in are you in England? I'm in Australia. 
Oh yeah, no, I can't. I, I, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. I can, I can only. Can you send up to Eric then? Send up to Eric. All right, Eric in Tennessee. Yeah, Eric in Hebron. All right, so I'll send him to Eric. Yeah, I'll send him to Eric. I, I got okay. I got his address. Yeah. No, what happens is no I, I can't ship. I can't ship out of uh, America. I mean, the hassle I got to go through is unbelievable. Even to ship something to Canada, okay. it's like all the paperwork I got to fill out. Okay, but but thank you. You got a okay. Cal you got a Calvin. You 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 thank know. You. Thank yeah. you, Rick. All right. Very very good. Thank thank you, Calvin. Right. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So there you have right. it. Okay. So there'll be no six green Sunday tomorrow. Uh, we'll be off tomorrow, but we wish everyone a happy Easter out there, our resurrection day. And we'll be back in two weeks on Sunday with a six screen Sunday program. And we'll be back next Saturday night with our six screens at a watch style conference calls and our programs. So we want to thank everyone for dialing in tonight. Now, listen, if you like our channel, if you like our channel, why don't you like it, uh, on YouTube or Facebook? Why don't you subscribe to it? And I'll get the message out, get more and more people to listen in and see what's going on behind the curtains of the Watchtower. Well, we want to thank everyone for coming in. We want you all out there to keep standing tall. My goodness, I say it every week. Don't you ever give in. Don't you ever give up or out. Keep waving that flag of victory. And the last one, leaving the Watchtower, please, as we always say, turn off the new light. We'll see you next on Eric's program coming up on this channel, Awakening After the Watchtower. I want to thank all those for calling in tonight. I want to thank all those, too, that have commented on YouTube, Facebook, and the other platforms that we're on. Thank you very much for participating. Good night now.